So welcome to my webinar. I'm Jeff Linderman, a senior specialist with Go Engineer. The, what I'm presenting today is the CST Studio Suite and antenna design with electromagnetic simulations. So in this webinar, I will cover an overview of CST Studio. I discuss where CST fits within the Dassault system simulation solutions and I'll point out some key features and discuss the solvers in the Studio Suite. I'll then show some of the user interface to access the Antenna Magus, which is a predefined library of antenna designs in which we can pick and modify an antenna to use in CST Studio. Then more in the user interface, I'll show the template wizard, which simplifies our setup process and helps to select the right solver for a type of study. And then I will also show how CST Studio Suite can directly import 3D CAD models from SOLIDWORKS. So first, what is CST Studio Suite? When we look at the simulation solutions that are offered by Dassault Systems, we see there's many available options. From SOLIDWORKS simulation tools, 3D experience platform roles, and Simulia simulation, there are structural, CFD, injection molding, and electromagnetic simulation available. The CST Studio Suite electromagnetic simulation package is offered both in the 3D Experience platform as the electromagnetic engineer role and also as a on-premise installation straight from Simulia called CST Studio Suite. So the history of CST, it's been an industry leader in electromagnetic simulation since 1992. It is the complete solution for 3D electromagnetics. It joined Dassault Systems in Simulia in 2016. And there's a worldwide support network, which is really nice with CST Studio because it can cover so many different electromagnetic studies and functions. Having support with this worldwide is very important. So our key features, electromagnetic field solvers for applications across the EM spectrum are contained within a single user interface. So it is the end-to-end -end solution for designing, analyzing, and op optimizing electromagnetic components and systems. And we can link between SOLIDWORKS CAD Desktop and CST Studio. So these features all provide for a solution to simulate anything from a tiny Bluetooth antenna in a personal device all the way to a lightning strike on an aircraft. So our capabilities within CST Studio, we have high frequency. So 3D electromagnetic simulation for high frequency components and low frequencies dedicated to the simulation of static and low frequency devices. The particle studies, they're an advanced simulation tool for fast and accurate analysis of charged particle dynamics in 3D electromagnetic fields. And the thermal and mechanics, this powerful, easy to use tool for thermal and mechanical stress analysis. So linked to our other CST Studio products for coupled electromagnetic and multi-physics simulation. This will allow us to take the electrical study and actually create a thermal analysis on that. That's one of the main uses for our, uh, for a multi-physics simulation. And we have a cable tool. This is the tool to, for analysis of conducted transmission, EMI and EMS on cable structures. PCBs and packages, simulation tool to, specifically for PCBs. We can import PCB designs from EDA layout tools and the PCB rule checking is a design rule check for PCBs. And then finally, circuits and systems. It's a schematic design tool to simulate systems and circuits. So with all of these different functionalities, we have a bunch of different solvers within CST Studio Suite. Multiple solvers are available to match the best application. So the performance and accuracy parameters depend on several parameters, like the electrical size and geometry of our problem, 
the material models and material parameters used, the resonant behavior of the model, the type of mesh and boundary conditions, acceleration methods available for CPU cell acceleration. So more than one solver can effectively handle a certain application. This would allow for efficient convergence check and cross-validation of results. So when we look at the solvers, the time domain solver in the top left is probably the most used with CST Studio. It uses a hexahedral mesh and it's not really offered with other solutions for the type of solving that it'll do. It'll solve for broadband and high level of geometric complexity. The time domain transmission line method solver is similar to the T solver above, but it is well suited for the EMC, EMI, and E3. So it can model thin panel, coated metal, slots, and seams made for more board type simulations. And our frequency domain is more for our low frequency applications on small to medium models, and it solves faster with a multi-core CPU. And it's got the option for a tetrahedral or a hexahedral mesh. The asymptotic solver is for electrically very large structures. So imagine an airplane when lightning strikes it or a ship and you're looking for cosine interference of the antenna on a ship. Then we have integral equation, also for large structures, eigenmode where we're not using any excitation, and the multilayer, so a planar multilayer structure based on moment, method of moment. So let's look at this chart and see where these guys fit. So if we're looking at an electrical large size and a wide bandwidth, the T and the TLM solver, or we have an electrically large um, in narrow bandwidth, then we're looking at the asymptotic, the M or the I solvers. When you get into low resonant features, we can do that with the F solver and the T solver as well. And then the high resonant, the F solver and the small product and the eigen, eigen mode solvers. So like I said before, there's multiple solvers that can cover multiple different situations. So when we think about what kind of things that we can do, what industries will it work in? If you think about transportation nowadays with trains, um, planes, cars, all of those things, everything has antennas on it. Everything has wire harnesses, sensors, electronics. And now we have human exposure regulatory compliance that we have to meet. Um, so we have to be able to, to show what kind of exposure a human is going to have. Automotive. We have antennas, bioelectromagnetic sensors, electric motors, electronics, wire and cabling, all of these things, all of these electronics can co-mingle, but also can interfere with each other. Industrial equipment, if you think about nowadays farm equipment, you've got tractors and everything that are have GPS positioning sensors on them to help them line up when they go row by row by row. Everything's going into the internet of things, right? 5G communication and sensor technologies. And then in the medical field, being able to evaluate your system design, simulating MRI devices, hyperthermia treatment, or maybe thermal ablation of a tumor inside a human body. We can simulate all that with the CST Studio. Um, there's a huge biomodels library that's available that has a full um, scan based off of MRIs on the body. So you can actually, it has all of the, the liver and the lungs and the heart and all of that in there. And you can place your models, see the thermal effect on the human body. And then we get into the high tech industry. Um, you're looking at Bluetooth speakers and watches and we can see what type of human exposure we have, or we can see the efficiency of antennas, all of those things that we can look at in the system. So with the user interface, I will switch over now to CST Studio Suite. When we start CST Studio, this is our page that comes up. Um, notice at the very top, we have an option to connect to the 3D experience. So CST Studio comes in a legacy product that's on your desktop, and you can also have access to it through the, the 3D Experience platform. 
with the um, electromagnetics engineer role. The, what you're using in the background on the electromagnetics engineer role is actually starting in CST Studio on your computer. So all of that works exactly the same. When we start a new project, if I'm learning CST Studio, I've got the template creation wizard. So this allows me to look at what I'm trying to do. If I'm looking at EDA and electronics, I select that, then I have a different type of analysis for each of those different things. Um, EMC and EMI, am I looking at radiated emission? Particle dynamics, space applications, beam optics, statics and low frequency. So you have electromechanical devices, high voltage or heavy currents, sensors, EMC shielding, all of those things. So what I'm going to be looking at is antennas. So I'll look at a, an antenna for a Wi-Fi router. I can come in and choose that I want to do an antenna project. Then I, I have the options of what kind of antenna do I want to do. I'm going to work with a planar or patch antenna. And then it lets me pick which solvers that I can use in the simulation. So even though we have six or eight different solvers, it's only it's allowing me the best solver to use for this type of simulation. We set our units and then our settings. So if we're looking at our, our frequencies that we're testing for, what kind of monitors, my E-field, my FAR field, power flow, power loss, and then we define it at whichever that we're using. So I'm gonna cancel out of that because there's also another way that we can utilize in the system to look at antennas. Um, so down at the bottom, we have modules and tools for CST Studio. So the 3D simulation one allows me to choose this way without using a template. I can set them up separately. Um, what's nice about the template, once you get through setting it up, if it's something you do all the time, then I can just come and pick from my templates what I'm doing. Um, like this big EMC radiated susceptibility co-site interference with a ship and an antenna. Our circuits and systems allows us to do the schematics and assemblies. We have PCBs um, and packages. And Antenna Magus, this is the other one that I want to concentrate on. This is our library for antenna selection. So when we start Antenna Magus, we can start it directly out of CST Studio. So what it's allowing us to do is look for and find the antenna based on the application we're putting it in. So in my case, I'm looking at smart devices and mobile comms. Then I choose, am I going cellular, GPS, um, personal area networks, or maybe I want to look at the WLAN, so Wi-Fi. I can choose which channels I want, which um, type of, of Wi-Fi that I'm working with. So in this case, I can do the WLAN5, and then it gives me all of these options of the different types of antennas that I can utilize for this category. So let's say I want to look at the circular slotted broadband patch antenna. So over on the right, it gives me a description about it. The goodness factor is basically telling me how well it fits my application. So what am I, what am I looking for? I specified a compact integrated antenna for that WLAN purpose. And it gives me other information on there. So if I choose this and tell it, okay, now I want to design within that one. So th this gives me all of my information about my design guidelines, everything for that antenna. So it tells me that my, my middle range and my frequency band is 5.44 or 488 gigahertz. Um, and other information on the system. It gives me design guidelines. So it tells me increasing my patch diameter will shift my frequency downward and vice versa. So reducing my diameter by more than 6% will result in a poor match, but it gives me information of what I can change on this model and then allow me to make those changes. This is the same antenna but when we're in an antenna and we can do a design, we have a, a way we can do an estimated performance on it. 
This would allow us to go in and look at our es estimated performance, our reflection coefficient, which is our S parameter, um, looking at the bounce back of your signal. So when we're in this, if we wanted to make any changes, um, I could create a new tweak. I could tweak this, which would allow me to go in and tell, okay, my, my patch diameter now is, is 26.55 or 28, and then I can see the result from that. So it gives me a way that I can, I can tweak it on this end, on the design end, before I export it out to CST Studio. But in this case, I'm just going to go ahead, we'll leave it as it is, and see what the export does. So this allows me to export out this model one. And these are all parameters that will allow me, I can parameterize any of these things within CST Studio. So once I get this into CST Studio, I can do any type of optimization or changes within CST Studio that will help tune my model. So under my export model tab, I can export and open my model directly in the CST. So I have to give it a, a model name. We'll just do, I'll do this one Wi-Fi web. Just, so when it brings this model in, it comes in with these anchor points. So these anchor points are used if we're going through the schematic and adding um, other traces and things into it. I can hide those right now, I'll hide my all anchor points, and it already comes in with my, my power port set up, so it's ready to run. At this point, all I have to do is start the simulation, which I'm actually going to do that right now, and we can see down in the bottom that it's actually running this. It won't take that long on my laptop, so while it's doing that, I can look at some other things. We have a modeling tab also. This allows us to go in and create um, shapes, bricks, um, spheres, cones, cylinders. Um, we can extrude faces so we can draw sketches. We can do sweeps and everything. So it's got a modeling capability where we could actually go in and model this antenna within CSD Studio on our own if we wanted. Or we can make any changes to this model physically if we wanted to as well. And on the simulation tab, this is where we can set our frequency for the simulation. Um, this one, these are parameterized, so there's no value in there. They come from the parameters in my parameter list down here. So if I look at my parameter list, these are all the parameters that it brought in from Antenna Magus. So my frequency center is there. What I'm going to concentrate most on this one is my patch diameter. So that one has already finished. So when it finishes, then we can come in and look at results such as our S parameter. So my S11, I can move my axis to the minimum. So it's telling me at 5.594 gigahertz. Um, this is my best S parameter. So this has the least amount of bounce back um, from my signal. So more of my signal is going to get out from this. Um, with this at this setting. In our far fields, this was set up with a uh, range of far fields, so we can look at different ranges of far fields. So at the frequency center, if I want to look at the, the far field, I can show my structure. So it's showing me the shape of basically my antenna um, reception or broadcast. I can go to the 1D plot of it, and it's going to show me the angle and everything from that. So if we look at the, this is my structure, basically. It's telling me my main lobe direction at 16 degrees. So it's facing 16 degrees forward in my um, box. And it's also an angular width of 54.4 degrees. So you think of it from the source and out at 54 degrees, it's going to broadcast and keep getting wider. Um, a lot quicker. So once I have that done in my model, I'm going to switch over to another one. This is the same one. What I can do now is bring in a 3D CAD file. 
So importing a CAD file into CST Studio, I can import directly from um, SolidWorks. I could bring in Parasolid coming in from Creo, any of these other models, Katia, um, another Dassault system product. So if I choose SolidWorks, then it's going to allow me to bring in a static CAD SolidWorks file. CST Studio will recognize that file. And if we open up CST Studio and there's been changes made to the file, it also stays tied to it. So it'll recognize that and ask you if you want to update your model inside of CST Studio. Our other option to import from SolidWorks is a um, parametric import. So what this allows us to do is set up our global variables inside of SolidWorks as our parameters that are going to be used in CSD Studio. So if we make any modifications or we're doing any optimizations um, within CSD Studio, we can actually drive that dimension back over into SolidWorks with the global variable and update our model that way. It's really, really nice. So in this one, I've already have them imported. I can just show them. And so this allows me to go in and look at my model and it's placed where my uh, antenna would mount inside of it. So when we bring the model in, we can translate. So we're, we bring it in and we place it where we want it to be. Um, so we can translate it, rotate it, scale it, or mirror it. If I select translate, it allows me to tell what I'm going to do with it. Um, I can make a copy. So if I'm actually copying things with, within the system, um, I can transform until touch. So it's actually going to, between two items, it'll move one of them until it touches the other one um, and kind of just sit it down on top of it. Keeps you from doing interference or overlapping faces, things like that. This one already had placed just to save some time. But now we have our model placed inside of our assembly then we have to assign materials to the models that we bring in. Um, so if I go to my own material library and I can load from library, and this allows me to go in and choose what type of material. So if I'm making this out of polycarbonate, um, I can choose a loss free or a lossy type poly polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is normally a loss free. It's a, almost invisible to radio signal. Um, a lossy one would be if you have it coded for shielding. So loss free is the type that I used for this study. Um, we can set up any of our own. We can create our own. We just have to have the parameters that we need. So once we get that loaded into our system, then it's simply just dragging and dropping them onto the body to assign it to it. So these already have it assigned. If I look at polycarbonate loss free. So what this is going to allow me to do is rerun my study with that antenna that I brought in and see what effect it has on my S parameters and things like that. So I've already run this one. So if I go to my S parameters on this guy, um, I ran the 26.56 is actually the one that is from the design. And I can move my axis marker to the middle. So Remember before, the, it was 5.5. Now adding my structure to it, it's changed my uh, S parameter somewhat. I can look at my uh, far fields again. The far field on this model, same way. My main lobe direction is 12 degrees and my angular width is now 56. So it's actually spread out a little more and tilted over a little more. Um, so we're seeing the effect of adding it inside my housing. And if you think about when you're working with antennas, you have guys that are experts that design the antennas. And then you have guys that are creating a structure or a system. Um, I'm creating my product and I'm buying this antenna to put in it. I'm not an antenna wizard. I'm not an antenna expert, but I want to find an antenna that will fit in there and I want to see what effect my structure has with that antenna inside of it. So that, I, that will allow you to look at these things and uh, simulate the things inside of that. So what if I want to look at my antenna and see what 
affect changing my patch diameter and we'll have. I have the option to come in and do a parametric sweep. So if I choose my parametric sweep, this allows me to tell, okay, I'm going to do a linear sweep. I'm going to start with a patch diameter from 26.5, go up to 26, go up to 28, and I'm just going to make my step width 0.5. Obviously, I would probably do a whole lot closer range, maybe a whole lot more steps, but for my simulation, I just chose to do these. So that's my sweep, my parameter sweep. So at this point, I if I choose to start it, it will go through and change my patch diameter as it runs through and re rerun the simulation for that. So then I have this option where I can come in and look at my S parameters for all of these, um, the different sweep parameters. So changing my patch diameter from the 26.56 was the one that we brought in, um, dropped it down one and then moved up from there. So looking at the orange one, I get the um, the lowest point on my S parameter, so the, the least amount of back, bounce back, and that's on this orange one for a 27 millimeter patch diameter. Um, when I come through, I, I have my 27 millimeter. If I just want to look at that one alone, or probably this is where we started, and 27 is now the green one, so that's where we end up. Still a pretty close shape. I can look at my far fields again the same way. If I go to my far field plot and I can go to 1D and we're looking at the main lobe. So I'm back to a 10 degree um, angular width of 52.3 with that one. The other things we can look at, my, my electronic field. I think this one is really cool to look at. Um, I can go to a contour plot animate the plot so I can see the the waves as they pass through my my polycarbonate housing. That's pretty to look at for the last part, right? So that's my user interface. So what we saw so far, CST Studio Suite can provide a multitude of electromagnetic simulation options and solvers in one user interface comes with a convenient template wizard. It's really nice for someone that's not a true scientist expert in electromagnetics. It guides us through setting up a study and, and getting through a study. Antenna Magus provides a library of antennas to help us choose an antenna for our system. Um, it integrates directly with CST Studio with a parametric design, and we can modify that and optimize it within Antenna Magus and in Antenna. Um, CST Studio Suite. And then CST Studio can also directly import from SolidWorks CAD um, with either a static import or a parametric import tied to our global variable within. That concludes this recorded webinar on the CST Studio Suite antenna design. This has been Jeff Linderman, a senior specialist with Go Engineer. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and leave us a comment below if you have a topic you'd like us to cover in a future video. Visit our website, GoEngineer.com, for access to professional training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online technical resource.